What is going on everyone? How about today we talk about probably the best city in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Asheville, North Carolina. I was just in a little town not too far from there a couple months back. It's called Little Switzerland. It was just like Switzerland, just smaller mountains, less chocolate, and more chewing tobacco. Asheville is the largest city in the western part of North Carolina and the 12th most populous city in the state. The city itself only has about 84,000 residents with the metro area only holding about 425,000 residents. So it's not terribly big, just the way the locals like it. Asheville was incorporated in 1797, so it's been around a while. The Land of the Sky does have some history, and that is their nickname, the Land of the Sky. For a time during the Civil War, an Enfield rifle manufacturing facility was located in town. Now the war really didn't come to Asheville but it kind of did. When the Battle of Asheville was fought in early 1865, basically the Union soldiers showed up with orders to take Asheville unless there was a risk of a high casualty rate. When the Union soldiers got there, they found Confederate reserve troops dug in pretty good and decided to go take a look at Tennessee instead. These days, Asheville has one of the best music scenes in the country and has slowly become a great place for the 20 and 30 year olds to move to. But like all places, it's not for everyone. And that's what today's list is all about. Things you should know before you decide to call U-Haul and start heading to Asheville. So why don't you sit on back and watch my top 10 reasons not to move to Asheville, North Carolina. Number 10 political clash. Be prepared for some political drama in Asheville. It'll feel like walking on eggshells whenever you're talking to your neighbor that has a Trump sticker on his lifted truck or the other neighbor that has a Feel the Burn sticker on his Nissan Leaf. Asheville has recently been described as a tiny liberal island in a very conservative sea. I talked about this in my last video about Louisville, Kentucky. A lot of very red states have blue cities. Same thing here in Portland and Seattle. With the political atmosphere in this country the way it is now, this is something people are paying attention to. The thing is this, you should move to wherever the hell you want. Who cares how your neighbor votes? Just be concerned with how you vote. But people do put this down as a reason to or not to move here. Just keep that in mind, you're living in a liberal city that's in a very conservative state. It's just one of those things. Number nine, a housing crisis. Asheville is crazy expensive to live in, and that's odd considering they really don't have much going on here in the employment department. The median home price is about $275,000 and is expected to rise over the next five years. This is about 45% higher than the US average currently. Now this wouldn't be much of a surprise if the city was pumping out a bunch of high paying jobs. It's not. There's average paying jobs with average residents here that can't afford these high housing costs in a not so great city. There's a lot of five people to a two bedroom apartment going on in Nashville. It's like prison with video games and beer. At least that's how it was when I had far too many roommates. Number eight, poverty. To piggyback on the housing crisis, you have a solid amount of people living at or below the poverty line in Asheville. The city is torn apart by poverty. And this isn't like the college kids living out of their car for a year because they're trying to catch up on their student loans. This is generations of poverty with no real path out. While the unemployment rate is very low at 3.1%, the households with incomes less than $10,000 a year is higher than the US average. It means they got jobs, they're just not getting paid well. Combine that with the high house housing market, it makes the poverty rate sit at about 15%. Fewer and fewer Asheville natives can afford a mortgage in the city they grew up in. The good news is they're only seven hours away from Tupelo, Mississippi, where you can get a home loan on a fast food salary. Number seven, a lack of diversity. If Asheville excels at anything, it's having a lack of diversity and making minorities feel excluded. The city is made up of 78% white residents. There's a clear distinction between the typical white neighborhood and the typical African American or black neighborhood. Niche.com listed the top 50 most diverse places in North Carolina. You had neighborhoods and towns from the Charlotte area, the Raleigh-Durham area, Winston-Salem, Greensboro area, but nothing within 50 miles of Asheville, it seems. Paul Van Heden, I think it's Heden, Hayden, whatever, a local blogger in the area says that segregation is a loaded term that doesn't really apply to Asheville or it's, let's say, hipster scene or hippie scene. Van Hayden may be in denial. He is the only person I've come across that sees it this way. And that's from a Mountain Express post from almost 10 years ago. And that is also the last time I found anyone attempting to make this point or defend the lack of diversity in Asheville. Without diversity, you miss out on a lot of cool cultural things like food and music, things like that. 
Number six, weather reactions. Asheville has some weird weather patterns occasionally, and most people don't know how to react, even the locals. Despite almost everyone here driving Subarus, when it snows or when there's heavy rain, no one leaves their homes and the schools threaten to cancel. It's a lot like Portland, Oregon when it comes to weather and the whole Subaru thing. We had a good snow a couple years back in Portland. It got so bad that the school buses couldn't take the kids home. Some of the kids had to stay in their cafeteria until about 10 p.m. that night when the parents got there. Or actually, some of the police departments who had chains on their cars started driving kids home instead. It was it was pretty bad, but we're not set up for snow. A lot like Asheville. So we do the same thing as Asheville now. We shut down the schools at the first sign of a snowflake. Number five, floods and sinkholes. Asheville has a habit of getting flooded out. This is one of the only natural disasters that I've never encountered. Flooding. Well, flooding and volcanoes. Never been in a volcano. I don't think anyone really goes into a volcano. But you know what I mean. If the rain isn't causing flooding, the river sometimes doesn't stay put. It kind of likes to venture into the city a little bit. That's occasionally. The city's literally sinking into itself. On Merriam Avenue, there's a giant sinkhole, about 27 feet in diameter and about 20 feet deep. It first opened up on July 5th of 2019. They filled it just to have it open again six days later on the 11th. Since it's on private property, there's nothing the city can really do, although it's suspected that it may be due to a faulty pipe someplace. Let's hope that's it. If you watch my Orlando video, you know sinkholes are pretty scary. People sometimes disappear into sinkholes. Number four, traffic. Traffic isn't the worst, but locals claim it is getting worse. Technically, commute times are down. Not by that much, but they're down. As of the most recent data between 2017 and 2018, commute times decreased by 24 seconds. That's not a lot of time, but it is progress. It takes you longer to get yourself out of your car once you've gotten to your destination and fire off a comment on this video telling me how I should go have intercourse with myself. Those who deal with Interstate 26 every day might disagree that traffic is getting better but it is. So this one really isn't about the traffic as much as it's a warning to people moving there from places that have real traffic like New York, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. When someone in Nashville complains about traffic, don't spit your drink out and start laughing. It's rude. Number three, road work. When it comes to road work, it seems that Asheville likes to do as much work at one time as possible. Currently, the city is planning on doing some pipe work, which will not only close down an entire intersection, but it'll also affect the city's tap water. Thankfully, as of right now, this is planned to only affect people for about three days in the middle of this month but we'll see how that works out. The city is also planning another project that involves widening Interstate 26. This will slow down the already alleged massive traffic in the area. And this one could start as early as this September. Let's hope everything goes smooth and there's no delays getting people's water back on. All the city needs is a bunch of unshowered people stuck on Interstate 26 and angry. Number two, the locals. When you first move to Asheville, give your neighbors some space for the first few weeks. While you might be very friendly and eager to make new friends, locals here are usually very cautious when it comes to new people since typically they're not very big fans of transplants. They, they really aren't into transplants. They don't like them at all, tell you the truth. They blame the high cost of housing on people moving in from out of state. Maybe ease yourself into the neighborhood. If you're coming from someplace like New York, you might want to keep that to yourself. They really won't like you. Maybe tell them you just got out of prison, they'll probably accept that better than New York City. And number one, crime. When you compare every city in America that is relatively the same size as Asheville, the land of sky always takes first for the worst in crime. The crime rate is 53 crimes reported for every 1,000 residents. Between gang-related crimes, robberies, and even carjackings, there are far safer places that offer more than Asheville. The overall crime rate in Asheville is 94% higher than the national average, and Asheville is only safer than 9% of the cities in the United States, according to AreaVibes.com. Crime is the only stat in Asheville that really sucks though. All the other things like cost of living, employment, and weather get graded C's. Schools actually get a B plus, which is strange because almost always when you have a high crime rate, you see that it has bad schools and horrible unemployment. Kind of strange. The good news is when you get carjacked, you know that they'll be able to read the owner's manual and reprogram your radio to their to their likings. Side note to that one, some idiot car thief stole a car in Charlotte a couple months back and programmed his personal Pandora account and all his information into the car. Needless to say, when the car was recovered, they just called Pandora and found out who he was. Fabulous. 
love idiots. All right, so that's my top 10 reasons not to move to Asheville, North Carolina. Like I was saying, Asheville's not a terrible place to live. It's actually pretty nice. Crime, yeah, it's out of control and they've got some other issues. But you know, when you got a really nice place, I sort of have to reach to kind of find really bad things for it. And, I, and that's kind of what went on in this video. But Asheville is a decent place once you get around the crime and some of the other things. Don't forget all the links below. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought. Don't forget to subscribe. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.